Hi, I'm Azelle from The Upcoming and it's lovely to meet you. Thank you for speaking with us. We're in Hampstead, an area full of musicians such as Coldplay, Tom Smith and Liam Gallagher. I understand you collaborated with most of them. Can you tell us how it happened and whether it's sort of a North London bond? Yes, I think it is. There is a lot of musicians around here. I can see one of my friends' houses down there. I think the Coldplay down there, Tom Smith's up there, and that's no lie. Um, I actually bumped into Ricky Gervais on the street in Hampstead, and that's how I, um, that's how we, that's how we forged our working relationship. Did you know who you were, or did you? He did. He okay. did know. Yes, it wasn't. It wasn't as <laughs> random as just wandering in, in, into the, into him in the street, but. Um, we have met before, but yeah, I bumped into him yeah. in the street and then we got chatting about uh, doing a band. You're like, me, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, so this area, no, it, um, no, it is. It's, it's, full of, uh, it's, it's full of rock and roll, Hampstead. It's a lot more rock and roll than you'd think. I don't know, I mean, I, have, I don't spend so much time around here anymore. This pub is, um, this pub is an old favourite for sure. But no, it, it's always been... Um, I always wondered when I first moved to London why so many people moved to Hampstead, but I guess it's just because it's lovely. I now live in Hackney, a bit more street. Um, yeah, no, yeah, but no, it's lovely. It's great. There's certainly, you know, there's a cer there's a certainly a, 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 a rock and roll uh, vibe that goes on up here. And have you ever performed in this pub? I have, yes. Yeah, I have. I've performed up here, but mainly at parties or something. And then me and Tom Smith DJed at a party as well. But generally, just uh, drinking. <laughs> many good memories yeah, here. Many good, many good memories. <laughs> okay, well, we're really enjoying your new album, Reasons to Stay Alive. Could you tell me a little bit about why you chose to collaborate with the writer, Matt Haig, and the process it took you to complete the album between you? Um, well, well, why I approached him was because um, I was away on tour, on, on a fairly long sort of world tour with... Tom O'Dell, playing the drums for him, and I really wanted to get back and do an album of my own. But I sort of, I kind of wanted there to be, um, I just wanted there to be a reason for doing it, or, you know, sort of lyrically or conceptually or whatever. I, I wanted there to be, I didn't just want to come back and just write another album of sad, moany songs. Uh, so what I've done is I found somebody else to write some sad, moany songs, <laughs> and, um, and then I could sing them. Uh, no, I don't know. I just found him to be quite fascinating on on Twitter, I guess, and I and I uh, and I liked. I re I'd read that book, A Boy Called Christmas. I really enjoyed that, and um, yeah, I just I figured that. I don't know. Instinctively, I just felt he might be a a, a, um, a really interesting person to work with. Yeah, really interesting fit, and um, so I sent him a message, and he got back to me, and he seemed fairly enthusiastic, and we met up, and we really got on, and. You know. So how did that process evolve? Were you kind of on the phone all the time, or, or did you meet up all the time? Or yeah, no, we, busy stuff? we met up, we met up um, really soon after that first sort of messaging flurry. We met up um, and, and got on really quite well, and he just, and then we started to work on um, sort of like a kid's rock opera thing, like a Hansel and Gretel um, idea. It was going to be an animation, I think. Actually, the more I think about it, it would have been really cool. But anyway, we um, th next time. And then he he, he just suggested, um, like, how about I write some straight up lyrics? You know, just you know, he quite fancied writing. He's never tried his hand at writing songs, so so we did that. And um, yeah, he sent me some words to sort of read to stay alive and have stopped time. And I was just blown away by the, the fact that I had all these lyrics to kind of sift through. And it made the writing process really very enjoyable. Um, uh, lyrics is always lyrics are always the toughest bit for, for me, and I think for a lot of people who write songs, the lyrics aren't always necessarily the well. To, to someone who's a wonderful lyricist, I'm sure it's the easiest bit. But um, it was nice to not have to do that for once on on an album of my, you know, of me singing. Yeah, it kind of takes the pressure off yeah. a little bit. It's nice yeah. to collaborate yeah, with someone exactly. as well, isn't it? Yeah. An um, absolutely wonderful video for the track Barcelona. Uh, it's just lovely, really oh, colourful, um, really emotive. It's sort of like a first date, kind of Coney Island. You know, yeah. it's really, it's really beautiful. And obviously, it's with the director uh, Miles Scarin. Um, was this a process that you were actually heavily involved in as well? 
Um, fairly heavily involved. I mean, I didn't do anything. I didn't do any actual work. I, I sort of went along to the shoot and sat there and drank a fake um, cocktail for a day. Um, I mean, I I really I, he Miles did a video for Reason to Stay Alive, like a lyric video, and um, I just thought it was phenomenal. I thought it was really amazing, and uh, and I couldn't work out how it wasn't a real model. He he all this there's like a train in the video and stuff, and um, I couldn't work it out basically, and I thought that was magic. I was like, when he told me that it was all just 3D, and I knew how much it cost to make that video, and so I knew it wasn't that much. So I was just like, how the hell? No, not the Barcelona one. That cost a bit more. <laughs> but the Reason to Stay Alive one, I was like, how the hell has he done that? And then I met up with him, and he told me about his how he does it, and then he showed me how we we're going to do Barcelona, and I was like, well, where's the where's the model going to be? And he was like, there isn't. There literally is nothing physical to it, and so it's really. And if you look, watch that video, it's quite hard to believe that there's nothing there. So you're, when you're sitting in the room playing, that, that model is... That's all just acting. Really? Oh, my God. That's all just acting. Yeah, I'm just an incredible actor. No, um, yeah, it's not, there's nothing there. It's amazing. It's brilliant. So we talked about that a lot, and I know, because originally I wanted to go to Barcelona, and obviously, like, anybody who's got a song called Barcelona will probably first think port of call would be, let's make a video in Barcelona. Um, but then when we got sort of down to it, and once we'd seen the Reasons to Stay Alive video, I really fancied the idea of an animation. And a video that I didn't really have to do that much in, so. But it's yeah, it's beautiful. He's a very clever man. Yeah, it is absolutely beautiful. And you've released your latest single of the album called A Different Game. And obviously there's still no video. Is it going to be the same sort of It's ilk, just gonna be the Barcelona or? video, but with the music to different games stuff over <laughs> nice. the top. No, um, no, it is gonna be the same because when we did um, we did a TV thing recently and they played the videos back to back behind the behind us and it looked so beautiful that I thought I think that I was just like, we should really keep this theme going. Yeah. So I've asked Miles to do anything that we do from this album, it's all going to be his. Uh, so the different game video is a follow on from those two. Yeah, that's not really secret. <laughs> I, I just haven't seen it yet. Okay. I've seen a little clip, but it's just not finished. Okay. And, um, and you've been doing, obviously, worked with Ricky DeVais um, and performed with him. Um, Watching Afterlife, which is genuinely extremely kind of sad, but it also offers a really uplifting light at the end of the tunnel. How did you go about doing the score for that and conveying that? Um, well, um, Ricky is a huge music fan who's, over the years that I've been working with him, he's sort of introduced me to a lot of bands I've never heard of and, and things, records I've never listened to. And this was no exception. I think when we were building up to Afterlife, he was very... Um, he, he was thinking about the soundtrack months before they even started shooting. And he was sending me sort of tracks by Mogwai and Sigaros and a band called Hammock and The Thorns and all these, all, all these wonderful records. And so I, so I had this great period of time of just being sent loads of brilliant music, but it was all with a view to him trying to get me in a, in a headspace. Um, and I think the idea was that Afterlife would have like a music, a visual as well, obviously that wasn't my department, but like an a, a audio and visual mood. Like the, whole thing, the whole thing with Afterlife is it has an amazing sort of otherworldly feel to it, whilst also being very real. And I think the music was no exception. And we, we sort of built this kind of like ambient palette and then just had like, you know, some of it's just very, very sort of soundscapey and then some of it's much more musical. But it was just a total joy. I, I, I've done, I've now been so lucky to work on a few, not, not loads, but a few kind of like film or TV things. And it really is just, I can see why everybody wants to get into it. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a really magical thing to do, to create music to picture. It's just a real, a real treat. Yeah. Now, I know you've got a young family as well, and it must be kind of tough juggling at your career and spending time with them. So I know you're going on tour for a few dates with Jamie Lawson. Are you doing your own tour as well? I did my own tour a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago. Um, and that was just a UK, um, that was a UK jaunt. That was a lot of fun. Um, I think we're going to do a bit more on my own later in the year, maybe in the autumn. Um, but I'm going, yeah, I'm going on tour with Jamie Lawson in, in May. I did a bit with Tom O'Dell in October, opening for him, not drawing for him. Then with the editors, 
uh, basically just all my mates, and because yeah, no one else will have me. No, um, Jamie Lawson, yes, and and me and Jamie wrote a song for on his last album, and he came and sang with me in Manchester on my tour, and he the next day sent me an email saying, would you like to come and open for me? And he's got a, you know, it's great, it's a great string of dates across Europe and the UK, so it'll be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Yeah, and where are you looking forward to playing most on that tour? Um, well, it's just always such a joy going around Europe. I'm looking forward to it. I start in Berlin, that'll be amazing. Amsterdam, uh, yeah, Amsterdam's always wonderful for us. So, I don't know, all of it would be great. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and what are your sort of future projects that you're working on at the moment? Um, so, I think probably a little bit... I hope in the future to work more with Ricky, because that's been uh, brilliant. That's, and him and I are always kind of just sending ideas back and forth, but I don't know what that will end up being. But um, I'm working with Dot Brown a lot, who I met in the Life on the Road stuff. Um, what else am I doing? Um, and I'm working. I'm, I think I'm working on a, on a feature film, which would be my, which would be the first one that I've done on my own. But that's uh, that's not yet something that is uh, common knowledge. And I think it's only a small thing, but it's quite exciting for me. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, and then I, and I've been working a lot with, recently with Miles Kane, which has been quite a good laugh. Smith and Burroughs, another album for me and Tom that we've been working on, that we've written, and that we're going to go and start recording really soon. This new Smith and Burroughs album is non-festive. It's uh, it's sort of a straight up. Um, well, I don't know it's, whether it's going to be rock or pop or indie rock or indie pop or pop or jazz, perhaps, or maybe we'll move into classical. Um, but I think it, it's definitely non-seasonal. It's a, you know, it's um, we've written sixteen or seventeen songs over the last couple of years, um, and I, I feel like we well, we, no, I don't feel like we have waited six or seven years to make this one. So for anybody that was there listening to it last time, I hope they're, I think I, I hope that they feel excited about it because it's it's going to be it's going to be great. And and this is that this was our this is the Smith and Burroughs stomping ground, perhaps not quite so key and up there as Coldplay, but it's. Uh, yeah, it's nice to be here and to be talking about that record and thinking about it coming up. But it's not Christmassy. <laughs> so how did the project um, start? Uh, when I was doing, I did an album on my own when I was still in Ray's Light called Colour of My Dreams, which was an album of songs that I'd written to poems by a guy called Peter Dixon. And I was doing a bunch of promo for it and Tom and I had just sort of become friends quite recently um, at that point. Both about to become dads and stuff so there was a lot you know there was a lot of there are a lot of parallels um but we've become very close and he just came along and did all the promo with me which is really really sweet so we I were going around playing these songs and he just came along and drummed the guitar and sang harmonies and we just got on really well and musically it was fun and at the time i was in Ray's Light, which wasn't quite such fun and i and i and i think that i just really kind of like got excited at the prospect of working with him and then he said why don't we go into the studio and do a try a song or a try a cover or something so we went and recorded um, Wonderful Life by Black you know that tune and um, that was the beginning of our that was the beginning of our album which somehow I can't remember quite how it slipped into being all Christmassy how but it did it started off with Wonderful Life and then it you know. <laughs> and do you do you like working more on your own because I know that um, you were part of a, obviously Ray's Light, a big band, but do you do you like being working on your own and doing your own projects, or did you prefer sort of working in that framework of a bigger band? Um, I think I think the greatest thing is just being able to. I think the thing that I feel really lucky lucky for is that I get to work in so many different situations, like some on my own, some with other people, some in a band scenario, and some as a sort of solo artist. Um, I don't think there's one that I prefer the most. I think I like. I like the idea that no, no, no one of them is forever. Because I think that's always the daunting thing. If you're in a band and if things are a bit crappy, the idea that it might be forever is just a bit much. And if you're on your, and if you're on your own and you're feeling lonely, I mean, it's kind of just similar to life, really. Uh, you know, um, I, like, I very, very much like being able to jump from one to one tubber. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's oh, that's lovely pleasure, that to it? speak to you. Oh, it looked longer on your cards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. That's oh, so wonderful. Thank you, thank you for much. a lovely interview. Thank you. Enjoy thank the you. rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers.